welcome students to pre-calculus class today on Wednesday the 2nd. Hope you guys are staying up on top of your notes. Hope that you're working hard and that you're understanding the math. Please remember I'm an email or a phone call away if you have any questions or need any help. So please make sure you're taking advantage of that. Uh, your parents are paying me to do a job and do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or need any help, okay? I mean that, and uh, please take advantage of that. Some quick announcements here. Um, we will have a test on Monday, so make sure you're ready for this. If any of you are not going to come Monday, I know last couple Mondays ago one of you could not come, and I appreciated that student contacting me and letting me know that. If you're not going to make it, call and let me know uh, so I can plan for how many students will be here or email me, whatever you prefer. Uh, but test this coming Monday. Make sure you're ready. A lot of you are showing up without the review sheet done, and you're kind of using that time to work on your review sheet. That doesn't bother me or upset me. However, it hurts you. Uh, the whole idea is for you to work on the review sheet. In, in other words, why would I take the time to make a review sheet video help, help video if you know you're going to come to class and then do the review sheet now it's up to you I don't care but my point is this you really are supposed to have your review sheet done you should work on it Thursday Friday and a little bit over the weekend and then when you come in you should know where your questions are now if you choose not to do that that's your decision um, but I do feel like you'll get more out of the class if you'll do that um, so test on Monday, review sheet on Thursday and Friday. Keep up on your integrity sheets. You should know exactly um, what homework assignments you have done, how many you've done, and, and don't get behind on filling that in. Every day you should fill that in. Excuse me for yawning. I apologize. And then lastly, I did have to contact some parents about the quizzes. They were due on Monday. Um, and after having done that, I have now heard from everyone, and I think that we're doing okay. But you do need to get things turned into me on time, okay? Um, your parents are my number one asset, and I use them, and so um, do understand that, okay? All right, very good. Uh, grab your notebooks, grab your books, calculators, pens, pencils. Let's take some notes, and let's get started today. Let's quickly review. You don't need to write this down, but let's quickly review before I give you today's new heading or headings. Um, we have studied the following trig identities. Now, again, don't write this down. Just look and see if this rings a bell. We have studied the basic trig identities. We have studied the Pythagorean trig identities. We have studied the sum, and that shouldn't be different. That's a typo, and I'm going to fix that right now so this is good for next year when I offer this class again. We have studied the sum and difference identities, the sum and difference identities. These three sets of identities should look pretty familiar. If not, um, I'm a little concerned because we have gone over these pretty in-depthly. All right. Now, just for the fun of it or for the love of math, let's look at two more sets of trig identities today. Okay? Two more sets. And again, don't write these down yet. You'll get a chance to write these down later, uh, contain your excitement. So just listen while I read these to you. Um, one of the new sets of identities we're going to study today are called the co-function identities. That should sound a little familiar. We talked about co-function um, identities probably a couple weeks ago, just a little bit in passing. And then also we're going to study some identities today called the double angle identities. Now I've told you, you should have a trig identity sheet of paper. And up top you can label it trig identities okay and I'm not trying to write neatly you know that but you get the point and then all over this sheet of paper you should have all of these identities written out you, I would have them written out in sections one section should be called this one section should be called this one section should be called this etc 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 and I want to encourage you to do that guys because you're allowed to use your trig identity sheet um, for any quiz or test all right so you can photocopy the book and and tape them onto a sheet of paper, whatever you want to do, but really stay on top of having a trig identity sheet. All right, let's continue on. Do write this in your notes. Go ahead and write down co-function identities and double angle identities. That's what we're going to look at today. And I will tr try to go as quickly as possible, yet still teach the math well. All right, we're going to look today at co-function identities and double angle identities. The lesson number is 6.2. And the date today is the 2nd, 10 to 13, if you like to make note of that type of thing. All right, let's continue on. 
Now, if you'll turn in your books to page 547, you don't have to, by the way, but if you want to, you will see this, this chart right here. And if you'll turn in your books to page 548, you will see this chart of identities right here. Okay? And these are called the co-function identities. And if you'll look, there's six of them here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? And then down here, though, there's actually four because there's a plus and a minus, so there's two identities here. And then over here we have a plus and a minus, so there's two identities here. So we have a total of 10 identities altogether, okay, 10 of these. Now, I'd like you, however you want to take notes, you can pause the video and go ahead and write these on your trig identity sheet. You can do it later, do it now, whatever, that's up to you. But I want to explain some of these to you and give you a little heads up as to what these identities really mean. For example, please don't forget that pi over 2 is the same thing as 90 degrees. Okay, we've talked about that, pi over 2 is 90 degrees. So when you see sine of pi over 2 minus x, here's what it's saying. If I had the sine of 90 minus 30, well, now look, pi over 2 is my 90. Do you see that? Then here's my minus sign. Here's my minus sign. And then here's my x. Do you see this x right here? Well, my x in this problem would be 30. Do you see that? So sine of 90 minus 30, as long as I have 90 right here, then this would be my x right here. So sine of 90 minus x equals cosine of what? Cosine of x, cosine of this x right here. So what these trig identities are saying is something like this. If I have sine of 90 minus 30, that's the same thing as cosine of 30. Now why 30? Because that's the angle right here. So whatever angle is right there, that's the angle that goes right there. As long as we have a 90 right here. Same thing with tangent. Look at this. Tangent of 90 minus x. So if I had tangent of 90 minus 25, that would be the exact same thing as the cotangent of, now what's my x, what's my angle, 25 degrees. So the tangent of 90 minus 25 would be the exact same thing as the cotangent of 25 degrees. Why 25? Because that's the number right here. Are you seeing this okay? I hope that you are. It's very important that you understand what these trig identities do for you, okay? <coughs> and I could go through each one of these and give an example. I'm not going to do that. Now, down here, it's a little different. Here I have sine, and notice in all of these parentheses, the 90 came first, and then minus x. Do you see that? But notice in these cofunction identities down here, the x comes first, and then plus 90 or pi over 2. So what this is saying is something like this. If I had sine of, I don't know, 50, no, let's say, let's say 120 minus 90, that would be the same thing as, now stop and look, match everything up. Here's your sine, here's your sine, here's your x, your x is 120, here's your negative sine, negative sine, Here's 90, here's 90, and then it equals, now look at the minus sign, the minus sign is in red over here, so we know we're going to use the red sign from over here, so red, so there's your minus sign, red, and then cosine comes next, cosine, and then cosine of what? X, well what's your X over here? Here's your X, follow the arrow, 120, so cosine of 120, there we go. So the sine of 120 minus 90 equals negative cosine of 120. Now that's true. Whatever this angle is right here, you would put over here as long as this is 90 degrees right here. And watch your signs too. There's a negative sign out front according to this trig identity. Let me show you one more thing, then we'll keep moving, okay? If I had the cosine of, I don't know, 50 plus 90, those are all degrees, of course. That would equal, now let's stop, here's my cosine, here's my cosine, here's my x, my x is 50, I have a plus sign, plus sign, pi over 2 is 90, so there's my 90, now I have a plus sign, and plus is in black up here, so when I come over here I want the black sign, which is negative, and then sine, so sine, and then sine of what? x, well x is, follow the arrow, x is 50, 
So the cosine of 50 plus 90 equals the negative sine of 50. Okay? I hope you're understanding that. That's what these trig identities do for you. These are called the cofunction identities, and you do not need to memorize them, but you do need to be familiar with them. Okay, let's talk about the double angle identities. Now, I'm not sure why I did not write down the page number, but the page number for these, if you want to make note of this, I'm looking it up right now while I'm talking, is page 551 page 551. So again, you can pause the video, copy these down now, do it later, but you do want these on your trig identity sheet. Now, let me show you what is so unique about the double angle identities. You start off with sine of 2 times an angle. 2 times x is your degrees or your radians. And look, these identities allow you to rewrite this so that you don't have the 2 in there with the angle. It's just sine of x or cosine of x. You see they're called, excuse me again for yawning, I'm sorry, a little tired today. Um, they're called the double angle identities because you have a 2 right here in your original starting trig expression. Look at this, 2x. But then over here when I write the equivalency, Notice everything I'm taking the tangent of is just x, it's not 2x. So the double angle identities allow you to take an angle that's being multiplied by 2 and rewrite it so that that 2 is no longer with the angle. Now look at what's special about the cosine of 2x function. There are three expressions. This, you could use this, or you could use this, or you could use this. All three of those equal cosine of 2x. Now, why do we want to write all three down? Because in different situations, you will want to use different ones of these, depending on what you're trying to do. And we'll do some problems, and you'll get more used to that later as we go along. So I hope I've at least explained these decently well, I hope. And now let me give you some closure. We're going to get into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 about seven or eight problems, but, 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 three or four of those were the same problem right here, two, three, all four of those are one problem, so it's really about five problems, and then we can get into today's homework, so I'll try to go fast and get this over with quickly. Okay, let's start off by finding, write this in your notes, please, problem number one today, let's find an equivalent expression for tangent of x plus pi over two. And probably on a test or a quiz, I would let you know what your goal would be on this. And in this case here, go ahead and write this down. Your goal would be to take this expression here and break it all the way down and simplify it until you come up with this right here. So that's your goal. And you're like, wow, that's pretty much impossible. It's not that bad. Please watch, okay? All right, first of all, we have tangent of x plus pi over 2. Now, if you'll look at your cofunction identities, you will see none of them match this. None of them. Look up here. You have tangent of, look at this, 90 or pi over 2 minus x, pi over 2 minus x, but you do not have anything where it's x plus pi over 2. So here's the first thing I would like to show you. Remember, anytime you have tangent of an angle, and this whole thing here is the angle you're taking the tangent of, anytime you have tangent, remember in your basic trig functions, tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine. So there we go. So there's your first substitution. Now again, I'm not asking you to think to do this on your own. I'm asking you to write it down and say to yourself, okay, that makes sense. I might not have thought to have done that, but I understand that. Now remember, there's a trig identity. Tangent equals sine over cosine. Okay, so what I just did is I applied that here. Tangent of this angle equals sine of this angle of cosine of this angle. Now, if you will go ahead and get your notes out, please, and would you look at these trig identities right here. Look, sine of x plus pi over 2. Forget the negative sign for a second. This is black, so we match it up with black over here. Okay, So sine of x plus pi over 2, which is what we have, sine of x plus pi over 2 equals cosine x. So what I can do is for the whole top part of my fraction right here, I can now go ahead and put cosine x. 
because of that trig identity. Now look what I have in the denominator. I have cosine of x plus 90, cosine of x plus pi over 2. So let's see. Hey, here it is, right here. Here's the plus sign. Cosine of x plus 90, now it's black, so look for the black sign, equals negative sine x. Here it is. Cosine of x plus pi over 2, which is what I have, cosine of x plus pi over 2, equals negative sine x. So I can put negative sine x right here. That is so cool. And now I'm finished. You have a positive over a negative. A positive over a negative is negative. And if you'll look at your basic trig identities, cosine over sine is cotangent. Cosine over sine is cotangent. You'll see that on your basic identity sheet. Very good. Moving on to the next problem. Let's find an equivalent expression for secant of x minus 90. Secant of x minus 90. Now what I would like us to do is I would like us to take secant of x minus 90 and I would like us to break that all the way down until we end up with this. Cosecant of x. Cosecant of x. Now, let's use some common sense, okay? Right now we have secant of, now look, x minus 90. Do you see it? Of course, 90 would be the exact same thing as x minus pi over 2. The exact same thing. Okay, pi over 2 is 90 degrees. Now, I would like us to go look at our original, our, um, uh, co-function identities and see if we have x minus 90 anywhere. No, 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 no. None of these are x minus 90. They're all 90 minus x. So they're no good. Now, look at this. Hey, look, I've got sine and cosine of x minus 90. x minus 90. So if I could... Hey, I just had a thought. Hold on a second. Remember you learned that secant an angle is the same thing as 1 over cosine. Look at your basic. And here again is another reason why you should have a trig identity sheet. If you have that handy, you can look at it right now. Look at the basic trig identity section. And in that section it stated secant of x equals 1 over cosine x. So really, secant of x minus 90 is the same thing as 1 over cosine of x minus 90. Do you not see that? Look. Look right here. Anytime you have secant, it's the same thing as 1 over cosine. So I have secant of this. That's the exact same thing as 1 over the cosine of, same thing, x minus 90. Now we're getting somewhere. Cosine of x minus 90. That rings a bell. Look right here. Cosine, now watch carefully. Cosine of x minus 90, right here, x minus 90. Notice it's in red, so you want the plus sign. Cosine of x minus 90 equals positive sine x. Cosine of x minus 90. Well, that's what we have. x minus 90 equals positive sine x. So for cosine of x minus 90, I have 1 over cosine x minus 90. That's the exact same thing as just simply the sine of x. It is, yeah, right here. Look, guys, right here. Cosine of x minus 90 equals sine x. So I can put 1 over sine x. Now hold it. We know this. We know you learned this on your basic trig identities page. Cosecant x equals 1 over sine x. We learned that. So if I have 1 over sine x, that's the exact same thing as cosecant x. Cool. Moving on. Doing good. All right, now we're going to get into a little more difficult math, so hang on to your horses here, and let's get ready to really do some work here, okay? First of all, notice that we are given tangent of theta is negative 3 fourths, and notice that theta is in the second quadrant. I think it would be wise to go ahead and get a picture of that real quick, so we know we're in quadrant 2. Remember, you always draw your triangle onto the x-axis, Caleb, you and I talked about that the other day when you dropped off your quiz, okay? It's kind of like a bow tie, okay? That's a good way to remember that you always draw your triangles on the x-axis, okay? You know, you know, I've never seen a bow tie that's like this. That would be pretty funny, okay? And, and look, in this situation here, all of your triangles are drawn onto 
the y-axis, okay, and we don't want that. So we're going to go to the second quadrant. Why? Because it says that, quadrant 2. And we're going to draw our triangle there. And we're going to go ahead and put theta right here, okay? Now what do we know? We know tangent of theta is 3 fourths. Negative 3 fourths, but I don't really care about the negative right now because I'm trying to draw the size of the triangle. Now tangent is opposite over adjacent. So here's theta. I go opposite, that would be 3. I go adjacent, that's 4. Now, quickly using Pythagorean's theorem, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Trust me, you will get 5 for the hypotenuse. So there. So let's review. First of all, I knew I was probably going to need this information later. So I went ahead and went to my second quadrant, like it says. I drew my triangle onto the x-axis. Here's my x-axis right here. I drew my triangle onto the x-axis. Here's my theta right here. And then I knew this side was 3, the opposite side. This side here was 4, the adjacent side, because tangent of theta is 3 fourths, opposite over adjacent. And then I could find the hypotenuse by using Pythagorean's theorem. Now let's continue on. We want to find the sine of 2 theta. So let's go ahead and use our double angle identities. Sine of 2 theta, or 2x, equals 2 sine x cosine x. So this equals 2 sine x. We're going to put theta. 2 sine x cosine x, or cosine theta. Now that's from your trig identities. Do you see that? Let's look at it one more time. Sine of 2x equals 2 sine x cosine x. So sine of 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. Now let's make some substitutions. I no longer need this because I've already said it equals this. So now all that I have to do is find the sine of theta and put it right here. Find the cosine of theta and put it right here. So the sine of theta. Well here's theta. Um, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So 3 fifths. Hold everything. Hold the horses. What quadrant are we in? Second quadrant. So what's your sine sequence in the second quadrant? Positive, negative, negative. So sine is positive. Cosine is negative. Tangent is negative. Guys, when you get in other quadrants other than the first quadrant, don't forget to check your sign. So sine of theta would be positive 3 fifths. Now cosine of theta, look, cosine is negative in this quadrant, okay? So I'm going to put a negative sign here. And now what is the cosine of theta? Adjacent over hypotenuse, 4 fifths. So I'm going to put 4 fifths. So now you can use the calculator or just multiply it out longhand, whatever. It's 2 over 1 times 3 fifths times negative 4 fifths. And you would get negative 24 over a positive 25. Or in other words, a negative 24 20 fifths. Not too bad. Now if you look at the next problem, we're going to use the exact same information, only, only now we're going to find the cosine of 2 theta. So if we're going to use the exact same information, let's go ahead and, and cut and paste, or drag this, if you will, over here to the next page, because we can definitely use that information. All right, here we go. Here's the next problem I would like you to write in your notes. Would you please do this? Given that, well, I guess you don't. I guess you don't have to write all this again. Just stay under this same heading here and just put. Now we're going to find the cosine of two theta. All right. Now we're going to find the cosine of two theta. The last problem we found the sine of two theta. Now we're going to find the cosine of two theta. Now, if you'll remember, there's three choices we have for our identities, and it really doesn't matter which one you use. Um, I think I'm going to go with this one here. I think it might be a little easier. Um, it really doesn't matter that you'll get the same answer either way. I'm going to go with this one just because I feel like it. 1 cosine of 2x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So 1 minus 2 sine squared x. There we go. Now I can go ahead and cross this off. I no longer need it. And here we go. 1 minus 2. And now I've got to find, of course, it says sine of x. I should have made that theta. Sorry about that, sine of theta. 1 minus 2, and then we're going to find the sine of theta, and then we're going to square it. Well, look, sine is positive in this quadrant, so we know it's going to be positive, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so 3 fifths. So I'm going to put right here in the parentheses 3 fifths. Now you should know by now, students, I hope that you know this, you do your exponents first, so do not multiply 2 times 3 fifths first. Instead, what you do 
is you would write 1 minus 2 and then you would put 9 25ths. Now where would that come from? Well, you square the 3, 3 squared is 9, you square the 5, 25. And now with the calculator or whatever you want to do it, next you would have 1 minus 18 25ths because 2 times 9 25ths is 18 25ths and then 1 minus 18 25ths would be 7 25ths. 7 25ths. Alright, so doing pretty well so far. Let's continue on. That would be your answer. And now let's try the next problem. Again, it's the same information. So I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste uh, the same information right here. Or I guess drag it, I should say, to this page right here. There we go. And now let's go ahead and use this same information. Now we're going to find the tangent of 2 theta. Tangent of 2 theta. Let's go to our trig identities here. Tangent of 2 theta is this right here, 2 tangent x minus tangent squared. So 2 tangent x, 1 minus tangent squared. Get this thing to work here. Alright, so we have 2 tangent x over 1 minus tangent squared x. There we go. And now, students, we're all set. What is tangent in this quadrant? Well, sine, cosine, tangent is negative. And tangent would be opposite over adjacent, 3 fourths. So up top, I have 2 tangent of x, or 2 tangent of theta. I guess all of this should be theta. And again, I apologize, make that theta. So 2 tangent theta, that would be 2 times negative 3 fourths because tangent of theta is negative 3 fourths. And then in the denominator, you would have 1 minus, and then it's tangent squared. So that would be negative 3 fourths quantity squared. Now let's simplify the numerator first. 2 times negative 3 fourths, if you use a graphing calculator, trust me, it would be negative 3 halves. Okay? And then down here in the denominator, you would have 1 minus a positive 9 sixteenths. Now where did the 9 sixteenths come from? Well you squared the 3 and you squared the 4. So you would have a positive 9 and a positive 16. Why is it positive? Because you have a negative 3 fourths times a negative 3 fourths would give you a positive 9 sixteenths. And then you have 1 minus this. So now we would have negative 3 halves over um, 7 sixteenths because 1 minus 9 sixteenths is 7 sixteenths. So now what we, what we really have students is negative 3 halves divided by 7 sixteenths. Do you see that? Negative 3 halves divided by negative 7 uh, divided by 7 sixteenths. And remember when you're dividing fractions you change the division to multiplication and you flip the fraction. So really I'm going to have a 16 up top and really I'll have a 7 in the bottom, so 16 over 7. Now 2 will cancel into 16 8 times, and you have a negative times a positive, which would be a, a negative 3 halves times a positive 16 sevenths, would be a negative 24 over 7. Where the negative come from? 3 times 8. Where the 7 come from? 1 times 7, so negative 24 over 7. And now one more problem, and then after this we just have a couple more and we're done, so just two more. Now, this one's going to be pretty decently confusing, so I really do ask that you'll give me your undivided attention. I really feel like you're going to need to do that to get this problem right, okay? So first of all, I want to take this information and drag it to the next page because again, we're still doing, we're still using the same, pretty much the same information. Okay, now look, please watch this, students. It's very important you see this, okay? Um, the I want you to tell me, find each of the following, tell me the quadrant in which 2 theta lies. The quadrant in which 2 theta lies. Now, let's just hold on a second, okay? First of all, let's go back to our, our, our answers here for just a second. Would you do that? Please watch this. When I found the sine of 2 theta, what kind of answer did I get? Negative. When I found the cosine of 2 theta, I got out a positive. 
and when I found the tangent of 2 theta, I know I just erased it there, but I got out a negative answer. So, that means all of my 2 theta answers went like this. Are you ready? Sine was, let's write, let's write it like this. Now watch this. Sine of 2 theta was negative. The cosine of 2 theta was positive. And the tangent of 2 theta was what? Negative. So when I found the sine, cosine, now watch this, students. When I found the sine, cosine, and tangent of 2 theta, what was my sine sequence I got out for sine, cosine, and tangent? Negative, positive, negative. Oh, really? Say that again. Negative, positive, negative. Which one of the quadrants has a sine sequence of negative, positive, negative? This one down here. P quadrant number four is negative positive, negative. So when I found the sine, cosine, and tangent of 2 theta, and I got out this sine sequence, then I know that 2 theta has to be in what quadrant? It has to be in quadrant 4. It's that easy. Now some of you will get that, some of you won't. That's a little tougher, deeper level thinking problem there. But again, if you'll go back and look, when we found the sine of 2 theta, we got out a negative answer. When we found the cosine of 2 theta, we got out a positive answer. And when we found the tangent of 2 theta, we got a negative answer. There's only one quadrant, men, that has a sine sequence of negative, positive, negative, and that's the fourth quadrant, okay? So there is the answer, okay? All right, um, let's go ahead and continue on. Two more quick problems and we'll be finished. Now this next problem is going to be what I call an extremely difficult problem. So please, again, don't get discouraged. I'm not asking you to teach the class. I'm not asking you to be to understand why I'm doing everything that I do, um, or at least to have th at least I'm not asking you to think of it on your own. Excuse me again for yawning. What I'm asking you for is that you hopefully follow the reasoning that I'm do what I'm doing here. Okay. Now I have sine of three theta. And what the directions say here is they want me to write it in terms of just theta. So in other words, in the end, whether I have, listen, whether I have sine, cosine, or tangent, I don't care. But I do not want 3 theta in the end. I just want theta. So here's what I'm thinking. Now, again, I'm not asking you to have thought of this on your own, but hopefully as I do this, you're like, okay, I understand that. Okay, we have sine of 3 theta. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break 3 theta up into this right here. Watch. 2 theta plus theta. Now 2 theta plus theta or plus 1 theta is 3 theta. That's totally fine to do, okay? And the reason I did that, let me explain why I did that. I did that because we learned yesterday some sum and difference trig identities. And if you'll look at your trig identity sheet from yesterday's notes, whenever we have the sign of two angles that are being added, you have to look in your notes to see this from yesterday, okay? But whenever we have two angles that are being added, I can then write it like this. This is my U and this is my V. So I would have the sine of 2 theta, cosine of theta, and then when it's adding here, we have a plus sign here, and then we would put cosine of 2 theta, sine of of theta. So we learned that yesterday. Okay, look in your notes. You'll see that. It was called the sum and difference properties. Now I'm almost there. Remember, I just want my final answer to have theta and not 3 theta and not 2 theta, but just theta. Look, I've got cosine of theta. That's good. I've got sine of theta. That's good. This is the only part I've got to get rid of. I wish I did not have 2 theta here, and I wish I did not have 2 theta here. Okay, but I've got an idea. Did I just not learn today some double angle identities? Sure you did. So go ahead and look in your notes. What is the double angle identity for sine of 2 theta? In other words, what could I put for the sine of 2 theta? Well, if you look in your notes, you'll see it's 2 sine theta cosine theta. And then bring down your cosine theta. Guys, that is so cool. In fact, I'm not sure why I put an X right here. See that X right here? That was totally wrong. And we're going to try our best to yank that out of there. All right. There should be a theta. 
So that's a really good substitution. Now look, I've got theta, 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 which is what I wanted. That's really exciting. Now, I've got, bring down your plus sign, and I'm going to put a parenthesis here for cosine of 2 theta. See this sine theta right here? I'm just going to go ahead and bring that down, okay? I don't need, I'm fine with that. It's just theta, not 2 theta, so I'm good with that. But cosine of 2 theta. Now, we learned um, some different trig substitutions for that. In fact, if you're looking in your notes today, there's three different options. And it really doesn't matter, I suppose, which one you put in. Just because I feel like it, I'm going to choose this one right here, okay? 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Look, we did it, guys. Now everything is theta, 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 theta. Now we do have some simplifying to do, so real quick, this is one term right here, not two terms. There's no plus sign here or a minus sign. So we have one term right here times cosine. So 2 sine cosine times cosine would be 2 sine theta and then cosine squared theta. So I took this times cosine and you'll get 2 sine theta cosine squared theta. Then over here, have my plus sign. Now you take sine. We have two terms right here. So we take sine times this and then sine times negative 1. So sine times 2 cosine squared theta would be 2 cosine squared theta sine theta and then sine theta times negative 1 would be negative sine theta. Now look at this guys. We have like terms. Look, this term right here is a sine theta cosine squared theta and this term right here is a sine theta cosine squared theta. They are like terms so we can combine them. We have a positive 2 and a positive 2. So I would have 4 sine theta cosine squared theta minus sine theta. Just brought that down. Wow, one more and we're done. You've been troopers. You've done pretty well today. One more and we're finally done. By the way, how do I know that I'm done? Well, my goal was to write everything in terms of theta, and I've got theta, theta, theta. And I've, simplifi I've simplified as far as I can go. So I am totally good. One last problem, guys. One last one, and we're finally finished. All right, here we go. Now, this problem here is pretty difficult. Okay, I want to warn you ahead of time. And um, before we get started, I have to do something down here in the corner that we're going to use later. If you will take a moment and look on page 551 at your double angle identities or look in your notes if you've written them down, you're going to see this. On the double angle identity page, you're going to see cosine of 2x equals, now I'm going to go with the bottom one, which is 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Now, does everybody see that? That's on your double angle identities box, okay? And it's on the right side, cosine of 2x equals 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Now, you're going to see why I'm doing this later, so don't worry about it now. Trust me, you'll see why later. But I want to get cosine squared all by itself, okay? So, if I'm going to get cosine squared all by itself, I first of all bring the negative 1 over and make it a positive 1. So now I have um, cosine of 2x and then plus 1 equals 2 cosine squared x. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get rid of this 2 right here. And I'm left with this right here. I'm left with cosine of 2x plus 1 all over 2, okay, all of that equals cosine squared x. So I took a given trig identity in the double angle identities box and I rewrote it kind of like this. And there's, there's a reason why I've done that and you're going to see why. Um, a little bit later in this problem, okay? So we're going to come back to this later. Now let's come up here. Okay, let's write cosine cubed x in terms of x's and 2x's as long as everything is only raised to the first power. Now right now, if you'll look, this thing is raised to the third power, right? Sure it is. 
but I want I want us to write I want us to simplify this thing right here in such a way that when I'm all done simplifying it I only have um, everything is only to the first power and I'll have x's and two x's for my angle so let's see if we can't do that okay so I'm gonna take cosine cubed x and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split it up like this now see if this makes sense I'm gonna write cosine squared x cosine x now that makes sense that's like having x cubed in algebra and you write x squared times x x squared x x squared x is the same thing as x cubed and that's what I did here with my cosines cosine cubed is the same thing as cosine squared times cosine x now here's why I did that this is so cool now you see why I did all this manipulations down here what does cosine squared equal it equals this so for cosine squared I'm gonna put a parenthesis and I'm gonna put cosine of 2x plus 1 all over 2 and now bring down your cosine x times and of course cosine x can be put over 1 cosine x over 1 and now we're done that's it so basically what I would have is up top I would have cosine of 2x plus 1 times cosine of x all over 2 you did it notice everything is in powers of 1 we don't have a cosine squared or we don't have a cosine cubed anywhere so everything's written in the first power and then we have x's and 2 x's cosine of 2x cosine of x now if you want to take this cosine here and multiply it through I guess you could do that that would be okay not the end I would just leave it like this personally and there we go we did it this has not been easy and it's not supposed to be this is pre-calculus and it's called pre-calculus for a reason but I think if you'll be patient and work on these and be patient and work on these and realize my tests and quizzes will be reasonable I'm not going to bury you um, I think you can do this stuff okay all right here's your homework go ahead and write this down we're looking at eight problems eight total problems page 553 and numbers 5 through 15 odd and then also numbers 23 and 26 call me or email me if you have questions please continue to work hard and there's a homework help video to watch if you need help on <coughs> your homework excuse me have a good day